Hello there. How are you guys doing today? Good, I'd hope. Today I'm here to talk to you about The Last Man on Earth, a movie that is based on Richard Matheson's novel, I Am Legend. Now, the movie you're more f we're probably more familiar with is the movie I Am Legend with Will Smith in it. No, no, I'm not going to be showing any footage of that, but you know very well which one I'm talking about. Now, this movie came out four years before Nine of the Living Dead, and, well, it gave George Romero a lot of inspiration for his movie, and it's kind of, well, it didn't set the base for zombies because they were around before this movie came out, but it started to define what a zombie was, more or less. So, let's go and take a look at The Last Man on Earth. The movie starts off with a guy named Rob Morgan going through his daily routine. He realizes he's out of garlic, and he also needs mirrors and gas in order to survive. I really seem to enjoy the house he's living in because of how cozy it might seem in the apocalypse. Morgan's pretty well off if I say so myself. Upon further looking at the calendar, we see that the story takes place in the year 1968, which so happens to be the year Night of the Living Dead was released. Upon leaving the house, Morgan comes across some zombie-like people, kills them with a stake, and moves on. Why? Well, you'll find out later. Anyways, we see him get the supplies he needs, and then he heads home to survive another night. The zombie-like creatures only come out at night, and they happen to be calling his name? How can they talk? Well, regardless, Morgan ends up blasting his music and drinks some alcohol. I don't blame him. I'd be drinking alcohol right now too if I could. <laughs> No, it's not alcohol. Yeah, I wish it was, but I can't have any alcohol in here. Oh, this haunted house I built is built in a family-friendly establishment, meaning I can't drink any. But I'll probably have some when I get home if I'm not too busy editing these videos. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, got off topic there. Let's continue with the movie. The next day, Morgan visits a church which I assume is the same church his wife's corpse is in, but I can't say for certain. Unfortunately for him, he ends up falling asleep on the coffin and wakes up when the sun has already set. Upon rushing back, he finds his house filled with these zombie-like creatures, who seem to have it out for him. Now Morgan has some balls to drive in the middle of all of them and get out of his car. It reminds me of a scene in the fifth season of The Walking Dead, but nah, I'm not here to talk about that show right now because I don't like spoiling things for people. And in case you already don't know, I plan on discussing the entire story of any movies I plan on reviewing, what I love and dislike about it, and so on. So if you don't want any spoilers, I'd 
recommend you stop this video now, watch the movie I'm discussing, and come back when you're done. And if you don't want to, that's fine. But you have been warned. Morgan thankfully uses a mirror to get inside. Mainly because these zombie-like creatures do not like seeing their image. So let me get this straight. They can be killed by wooden stakes, they can't stand garlic, they hate seeing themselves, and they also only come out at night? Sounds like a vampire to me, even though they act like zombies. No, well, regardless, it's a very cool concept for a film. After getting into his house, Morgan pulls up some footage and begins watching it. Upon seeing the scene where a man gets kicked by a donkey, he loses it completely. What happens next is a flashback before all the chaos happens. We will begin to see what really happened before everyone but him died. His daughter is having a birthday party and Morgan and his wife are enjoying their weekend. It's not long before an old friend of Morgan's named Ben comes and discusses his concern about the new world epidemic that is seemingly similar to the old plague. Is that a commentary on my work at the lab? We both know how hard you've worked. I'm sorry, Ben. I just can't accept the idea of universal disease. Morgan doesn't believe it to be as bad as he makes it out to be and brushes off the news. Now, if that happened to me, I would be extremely concerned about it. But denial is what a lot of people go through upon hearing bad news. It's completely normal. In another scene, we see Dr. Ben and Dr. Morgan discuss what is going on. It gives the audience a chance to see both of their perspectives. I find this conversation to be very fitting and really well written. I'll be quiet for a minute to let you listen in on what they are talking about. The goes on with his plotting, unimaginative approach. You have a better idea? Maybe. At least it involves imagination. Ben, it's as simple as this. An unknown germ is being blown around the world. It's highly contagious and it's reached plague proportions. And you don't believe some of the dead have come back? Well, let's get to work. And why are they burning the bodies? Why don't they bury them? Because it's the best known way to control the contagion, to keep the germ from spreading. That's what we've always believed at any rate. You'd prefer us to believe in vampires? If they exist, yes. There are stories being told, Bob. By people who are out of their minds with fear. Maybe. But there are too many to be just coincidental. Stories about people who have died and... and have come back. They're stories, Ben. Stories. And why are the infected people always so tired in the daytime? Why can't they stand the sunlight? Why are they only seen at night? Come here. Look. I know it's dusk. Now, is this bacilli or isn't it? It doesn't alter. And this bacilli is found in the blood of every infected person, or isn't it? To show me germs is not to refute these stories, Bob. Point is, if there are vampires, they exist in spite of these germs. Come on, let's get to work. Morgan ends up finding out that his daughter and his wife caught the horrible disease. The daughter is taken by the soldiers and is tossed off a cliff to burn. I said get out! I want my daughter. Mister, a lot of daughters are in there, including my own. I wish the wife would have listened and not called the doctor. But then again, the daughter would not have had much more of a chance anyways, as bad as that sounds. 
he decides to bury his wife once she dies instead of letting her body get burned by the soldiers only to have this next scene happen watch Who is it? Who's there? creepy and intense. The whispering of let me in and the reveal was startling even by today's standards. I was really invested just because it was done that well. Anyways, on Morgan's feeling pretty depressed at this time, you know, remembering all of that. Heck, I would be too. Upon seeing a stray dog, he decides to run after it. Lonely and sad, Morgan decides to look for the dog, only to find some corpses that have metal stakes in them. Does that mean someone else is killing the vampire zombies? Is someone else alive in this rotten world? Now what happens next is happy and sad at the same time. The dog comes back, injured and dirty, and Morgan cleans him up and gives him love. But after doing a blood check of the poor dog, he realizes that it too has the disease and that there is no cure to save the dog. Heartbroken, Morgan ends up burying the dog. Now this scene really struck a chord with me because I can't stand seeing animals get hurt. But even for a movie, I do give it props for making me feel sad for the dog. Luckily for me, I have an amazing dog at home, which I get to love every day. <clears throat> I got off topic there, but let's proceed. After burying the dog, he comes across a woman who is diseased, but somehow normal. Her name is Ruth, and she ends up telling him that she uses a vaccine to revert herself to normal from the vampire zombie disease. But you lived through all this. Do you know why? Perhaps I was chosen. Hm. That's a laugh. Or perhaps it's because a long time ago when I worked in Panama, I was bitten in my sleep by a bat. My theory is that the, the bat had previously acquired the vampire germ. By the time it entered my blood, it had been strained and weakened by the bat system. As a result, I have immunity. Well, it's only a guess, but it's all I have to go on. Morgan is honest with her about what he thinks is the reason he can't be infected. Anyways, some really bad news comes up. Apparently, Morgan killed people who were part of her group and were not completely turned by the disease probably the people we saw him kill at the beginning of the movie. Ruth doesn't have what it takes to shoot him, so she ends up sleeping on the couch. Morgan then ends up transferring some blood to Ruth and ends up curing her completely from the disease. 
isn't there something with blood type that has to be involved here? What if she didn't have the same blood type as him? Or what if she doesn't? Does it still work? Ah, screw it. I shouldn't be questioning this too much. So Ruth's group is after him and she demands him to run away because they won't wait to listen to him, even though he has the cure for all of them. Now before the finale of the movie begins, we see Ben, whom has been a vampire zombie this entire time, come inside, take Ruth outside, and then bite her. Okay, well, something like that happens only because the camera's focused on Morgan at this time and we really don't get to see what happens. You and I begin to question how they both got outside when Ben was clearly seen going inside the house. He does walk slow and you think Ruth would have screamed sooner. So as far as continuity goes, I don't like how this scene plays at all, given it leads to a very powerful scene later. So you've made it this far into my review. Well, if you haven't seen the ending yourself by now, this is your last chance because I am going to spoil it from here on out. Alright, you still here? Okay, well, let's continue. What happens next is a great scene of Morgan running away from this group of people that are half human and half vampire zombie. They want him dead, but Morgan does a good job from hiding from them and running into a police station to get some supplies. He uses a gun to kill a few of them, or at least slow them down, and he also uses smoke grenades to buy him some time. Unfortunately, he gets shot before entering the church. It's not long before he ends up being surrounded. Ruth tries to stop them from killing him, but... ends up being too late. He's right though, they were afraid of him, otherwise he wouldn't have killed him. Then we are left seeing Ruth leave the building, being the last survivor in the entire world to have the official cure for the disease, which is her blood. Sadly, we don't get to see her use it or save anyone else because we are left with a stale ending. Can't really call it a cliffhanger, since it's just an abrupt end, but I would have enjoyed seeing a little more of this story. Vincent Price is a favorite actor of mine from the older movies. He played in a huge variety of films, and if you haven't seen some of his work then I highly recommend you look him up. One favorite of mine being Theater of Blood. Overall, Last Man on Earth is a much slower, well-paced version from the Will Smith adaptation of I Am Legend. This movie has great music, amazing cinematography, great acting, excluding the child of Morgan's, great set pieces, and an overall a wonderful story. I can't say for sure how much it stays true to the book, but I can definitely say that this movie is well worth watching and you are doing a huge disservice if you haven't seen it already. Unless these kind of movies aren't your cup of tea, then, well, you're missing out. Now before I go, I have to mention that there was a version of this movie re-released in color. 
this vampire zombies are pale, Morgan looks colorful, and, well, there's color. Granted, it's nice to look at, but it's not what the director was trying to go for. Color was released, like, years before this. Granted, it was more expensive, but it was still out there. If he wanted to use color, he would've. So the director's intention was to use black and white. And that's the version I like more. It's more atmospheric that way, the set pieces stand out more, and it's just better overall. Now, Halloween's coming up, my favorite holiday, and I can't wait to scare kids. Oh, no, I'm working. Well, for those of you who are scaring kids or going to be in the outdoors, be safe, and don't do something too crazy. All right, time for me to go. Have a great Halloween, everybody. Ugh. I love this haunted house. Too bad I can't show it to you more. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh.